I sure will. A good morning, everybody. You all listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey, man. Got a radio show. How good is God, huh? Think about it. Just take a slight inventory of your own life and say it to yourself when you get through. How good is God, huh? Think of all the small things. All this, because that's him. You breathing, that's him. You still here, that's him. You got another chance, that's him. You ain't out of here. That's him. You got any measure of health? That's him. You think there's more to it than it really is, than it already showed up to be? That's him. All of that. You got any dreams or aspirations? You dream of other things? That's him. All that. That's him. That's him. Them clothes you got? That's him. Every time you eat, that's why they had this thing called You Say Your Grace. That's him. See, that's him, man. That's him. It's, a, it's amazing when you take a small inventory how you find out how big God really is in your life. Now, the more you turn yourself over to him, the bigger he can be for you. See, he'll only be as big as you let him. It's one thing about God now. He's a gentleman. He can make you do anything. You know, you get too big for him. You know, you, 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 you lose your humbleness. He can humble you now. God created man with the power of choice. We're the only creature he created that he gave us the total power of choice. When we mate, who we mate with, you know, everything, all of it, man. It's a choice. What we want to be, how much we want to make, where we want to live, what climate we want to live in. We can live in cold climates, hot climates. You know, we speak different languages. You can go learn another language. A bear can't do nothing but be a bear. He can't go learn how to be a fox. He can't go learn how to be an otter. He just can't. An ostrich is an ostrich, man. He can't come out here and fight like a lion. A lion is a lion. A lion eat meat. He can't eat vegetables. I don't care how much meat ain't around. He'll lay down and pull up out of here and die because he can't eat grass. He's just a lion, man. You, you understand this? That God gave us. We are the one creature he created that has total power of choice. You can make every decision in your life. What kind of watch you like? That's the one you can buy? You want to live in Switzerland? Go ahead. You don't like Switzerland? You can move to Miami. You want to live your life of crime? Go ahead. That's you. He gave you the power of choice. You want to do right? Come on. So now, look at this thing. We are all the results of a, of a series of decisions that we have made. 
if we could just identify that the problem is us, we could begin the solution. See, that's the problem, y'all. It's us. It's what we do. I threw my life down the hill. I can't tell you how many years based on some decisions that I was making. Now, I can justify my decision where I wasn't happy and I was doing this and I was in misery and y'all on there. Yeah, 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 Steve, when you get through, you made the decisions, though. And you can look at this any way you want to, y'all, but at the end of the day, I'm just talking to people that's really, really wanting to improve their position in life. And how do you do that? You got to have a solution. How do you come up with a solution? You got to identify the problem to even begin to solve it. But if the problem ain't ever you, how you gonna solve something that ain't you? See, okay, let me look at it this way. If somebody say, like, I got a child of mine, man, I just do right here, man. I, I don't even want to get into it this morning. Boy, I'm struggling with this, this boy. I, but man, you, you go to people, you ask them why they do something. I just did. I just wasn't taking care of business. Why? I just didn't take care of business. Boy, do you understand that your life is going to be filled with you got to take care of business? So when you going to start? You know, man, you can't, you can't, you, you can't go through life blaming everybody. It's got to be you. See, you can fix you. You can't fix nobody else. If you keep getting married and the marriages don't work, hello, hello, hello. Could it be you? See, I finally had to sit down and just make that decision. Ain't no need of me coming on the radio talking about nobody else and what they did to me and y'all just don't know. No, 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 man. What about the part you played in? Because, see, if you got a good marriage, you got a part to play in that. If you got a bad one, you got a part to play in that. Even if it just get down to you the one picked them. How about that, Mr. Mr. I made a decision? So, you know, man, once you can start identifying the problem, you can get on with the solution. The problem is usually within yourself. Do you know that's the quickest and easy way to fix your life? Fix yourself? That way you ain't got to check with nobody. Here's the beauty of going on and admitting that it's you. You don't have to check or clear it with nobody to start the repair process. You don't need anybody's permission. You ain't got to put it before the review board to see if it'll pass. It ain't got to go through Congress. You ain't got to hope that your uh, local politician get their hands on it and make a phone call for you. You ain't got to ask any counselors to come in and sit with you. You don't have to check in the rehab. All you got to do is decide. The problem is me. I'm going to start changing me. Identify the problem and start with the part that you can own up to. Man, that's the deal, y'all. It really is. And see, you when you when once you identify the problem, then all you got to do is start to plan it. Once you identify the problem, you can start planning on how to fix it or how to get to accomplishing something. But remember this, planning is important. If you fail to plan, then please plan to fail. If you fail to plan, then guess what? Please plan to fail. It cannot go any other way. If you don't know how to make a plan, let's just start with the basics. Just make a list of what you want. If you don't know how to make a plan, I bet you know how to make a list of things you want. Make this list and then go to God in prayer with an open mind. And open your mind up to all the clean opportunities that are available. Here's why a lot of people won't succeed. Because certain opportunities come along, you don't want to do them. That kills me, man, when I hear people. I ain't doing that. I know young comedians that come to me all the time talking about, Man, what you not say, man, just take every gig you can. No matter what it pay, well, l- l- listen to me, son. You can go make that money that it pay, or you can make the decision to sit at home and make no money. It's comedy hard business. They ain't paying but $100. You got to drive 50 miles. 
But if you drive 50 miles and you make the 100 and you stand on that stage for 30 minutes, you are now 30 minutes better than you was the last time you went on stage. Oh, man, I, yeah, man, they don't pay me. I ain't coming. You ain't finna be a comedian, man. Not, 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 not like this here. A lot of people just don't want to do what's necessary to do. So when the opportunity presents itself and you open up your mind to it, man, then get ready to go on and do it, man. You know? So remember, come on, y'all. Identify your problem today. Identify your problem today. And start with the part of it that's you. You can fix you immediately. Identify your problem today. Start with the part that's you. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, everybody, it is Friday. You are listening to the baddest morning show in the entire world, in the world, in the entire world. You can look, you can search, but you ain't going to find none better. You know why this show is so bad? Because the ingredients we put in it. We starve a little Shirley Strawberry. What up, Shirley? I'll take a cup of strawberries right here. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and we sprinkle it with a little cauliflower oil. Well, what's up? What's happening? A little chocolate. Chocolate go with the strawberries. What's happening? And, and that ain't it. That ain't it. We put just a pinch of Junior up in there. Morning, everybody. Morning. <laughs> and last but not least, a whole lot of food. What's up, Tommy? Come on, baby. Two scoops. Two cups, baby. <laughs> two cups of stupid in there. What it do? What it do? We're all oh, here. Is everybody here? Everybody present? Everybody We're present? Here. We're here. Happy yes. Friday, yeah. baby. Happy yeah. Friday. It's Friday, y'all. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. You know, is it Friday? I don't know how to say this, but having Trump in the White House makes the week longer, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> it do. Ooh, every day is something, though. Ooh, every man. day. Every day is something, man. My mother used to say, every day is it's something. something. It's something. What now? What's yeah. wrong now? What's wrong now? Oh, my God. What is he doing now? I wonder if he wake up and just say, man, uh, let's get Ooh. it started. I'm messing up. <laughs> <laughs> he wakes up and goes, Trippin'. what can I mess up today? Yeah. Uh, you know what you wake up doing? He go, he wake up to the window, <laughs> to the wall. Yeah. <laughs> man. We're going to get this wall. Oh, man. Yeah, he want that wall bad, man. Wall. But he's the only one, though. Yeah, he the only one want the wall. H- has he mm. bothered to listen to the American people? No. 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 Wall or, or go back to work or, or end mm. the government shutdown. No. Uh, come on no. now. No, no. Uh, he ain't listening to nobody. He, no, this is well, what he wants, and he says he is not backing down. Yeah. He not. Anybody that would offer the national football team soggy hamburgers and soggy fries <laughs> is not a good person, man. He just I mean, if you're Clemson. gonna give us a happy meal, and at least it. have a toy in there. You know what I'm saying? And put at it. At least give me the toy out the happy meal. <laughs> and he put it on the shutdown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is what we have to do. <laughs> well, you shut it down. So. Yeah. You shut it down. <laughs> so it and it looks like you. you ain't, well, it does look like he eating good. He does look like he eating good, though. Yeah. He really does. He's eating good. <sighs> yeah. yeah. I, I think his think. wife shut him down a long time ago. He been going through <laughs> the shutdown. Funny, yeah. She's back, though. She, <laughs> oh, she's no, back she in his good graces. Yeah, she riding you with think us. she back? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, haven't you seen Oh, absolutely. It's all smiles. But all have they good. been holding hands? Yes. They good. Yes, They're good. they have. Yeah, they they have you ain't seen no lip slap. Y'all ain't seen no lip slap nowhere. Nope. No, body language is good. Yeah, she's back okay. on board. You, you got to do They were playing hot hands Fox. before. Yeah, yeah she before. She on Fox. She back. It's okay. either this right. or go back to where you come from, so what you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh. That's funny. I guess the wall don't apply, though. All right. Listen. <laughs> Not to listen, her. Listen, guys, we're going to talk about relationships. We have a question. Uh-huh. Have you ever <laughs> called your ex after a date? Hmm. Hell hmm. yeah. That's at, 30, <laughs> that's at 32 after the hour right after this. Take my mic out. Oh, like <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, you guys know actor, uh, wrestler John Cena, right? Mm-hmm. You guys yeah. know who he is. Well, mm-hmm. uh, yep. since yeah. John Cena and Nikki Bella broke up last year, remember they mm-hmm. broke up, well, yeah. she's been trying to move on, you know, have different relationships, date, things like that. 
Uh, mm. That apparently to Nikki means debriefing and telling John every single date she goes on. She mm. says she lets him know everything. Wow. Uh, yeah, she told People Now that he's known every date I've been on. I have so much respect for him. And this breakup wasn't bad. It didn't end badly. We don't do bad things to each other. He's still close with my family. This arrangement does not go both ways, though. Check this out. John, on the other hand, does not talk to Nikki about his dates because, as she says, I, I, I do have the jealous bone. <laughs> At mm. least she can admit it, right? All right, mm-hmm. so this is crazy. We broke up. I'm not telling you nothing. Mm-hmm. We're done, okay? I don't care who you date. And I don't care if you care who I date. Okay. We're done. All right. Mm-hmm. You're done. Yeah. Once we're, it's over, we're done. Once it's it's, done. Yeah, once it's over, we're done. I'm can't, not calling you telling you who I'm dating. Can't, so you've can't never been friends with any of your ex? I'm Actually. not saying that. Yes, I've been uh, friends, but I'm not uh-huh. I'm not telling him who I date. Who you date. You're that's about not your his, relationship. Yeah, that's you not ain't going that business. Yeah, we're, mm. I, I'm friends with yeah. most of everyone. I yeah, hate even my ex-husband. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If we break up, I'm gonna call you, but it, I'm gonna be drunk. So no. <laughs> it is is <laughs> me? <laughs> what you gonna say, Jim? Hey, it's me. <laughs> That's your drunk voice. <laughs> don't act like you don't know who the hell this is. It's me. It sounds the same. I've been sitting outside your house for an hour and a half. Where you been? Where you been? <laughs> On a date. <laughs> On a date with who? <laughs> Man. With my new man. <laughs> what new man? You, you my seen new man. somebody? You seen somebody else already? Yeah. What's we, wrong with you right now? Why are you talking? It's about already. That? It was just been a year that we broke up. <laughs> and you back in? The, you back out there? You, you need to move you, on. You, I can't move on. <laughs> Why? Get your life. You the best thing I ever had. We know. We know. I know. <laughs> I tried to tell you that when we were together. I get it now. <laughs> yeah. Are you drunk? I get it now. <laughs> I will call her ex back. I ain't gonna lie. You will, especially you if I have if I've gone from boyfriend mm-hmm. to now side piece. I'm her side piece. You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. See, yeah, because you never know. After her date or my date, it, we probably need to see each other. We probably need to have a little moment. You know, it's. That, am I the only one? That's, yes. No. Yeah, because we're yeah. confused. See, if you ain't boyfriend almost, you could still be side piece. Oh, oh. <laughs> Have oh. you no dignity, man? Uh, I mean, you just, okay. you just, you fit like in wherever you fit man. in. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Oh, yeah. Just because oh. we ain't dating no mean you can't be side piece. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. You know, you know yeah. how to go with it. I'm going to answer every yeah. time. I'm here if you need me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I yeah. like that. Wow. Well, your new man at some point gonna disappoint you in something, and I'm here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pick up he, the pieces. He don't, he don't you know you. Do like you do know that. what I'm good at. Say yeah. that again, Jay. I love that, Jay. I love that. <laughs> yeah, he, he gonna let you down in something. <laughs> right. And let me pick up board. the pieces. Yeah, yeah I'm here. Yeah. yeah. So, so, in other words, you guys just don't care. Oh no, no, no. I'm no. good at something. Just utilize what I'm good at. Thing. That's all I'm saying. Maybe that's why you broke up. Like I could, I ain't gonna be no side piece. They ain't, they don't want me like that. You know, oh, they won't tell me like they don't want me like that. But what I am is a good listener. <laughs> I can well, that's listen. Good, Junior. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, Carla, I can listen. Well, I'm talking about okay. I got this, that. This is me. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> nah. You lying. He said what? You put the phone down already. He said what? <laughs> nah. And Junior, I ain't like it when I saw him. <laughs> Junior, Junior, listen. If you listen long enough, uh-huh. you could be a side piece. I promise. Pr- you become a side piece. Just keep listening. Just keep listening. Yeah. You get promoted what? from listener to Man, side. I hope. And you I want can... me to hold you? Well, come here, girl. Yeah, there it is. I know. Uh huh. Because in a man's ear, someone to hold me means sex. It just means sex. <laughs> to exactly. Man. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. the only reason you guys are hanging around. That's yeah. the only yeah. reason. Yeah, I get. I, I'm but you know that though. But okay, Junior, one more time. How do you look? What do you say? Uh, what? Uh huh. Uh huh. No, no, he didn't. See, that's what I told you. When I saw him, I knew. I knew I wasn't gonna like him. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Where y'all going next? You're a good listener. Yeah, I Junior. listen well. Uh huh. Okay, now turn it, Junior. Junior. Now she want to be held. Do it, Junior. You, you want me to come over? <laughs> no, I'm in the car now. No, I'm outside. I've been outside. You got them. Look at your, look at your glass. <laughs> I'm out here. 
Oh, open open the door. door. Yeah. It's harder for men to listen. Is he a stalker? We all know that. That's yeah. a fact. So yeah. you all are with Nikki Bella. He a stalker listener yeah. side yeah. piece. I'm yeah. the yeah. 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 older. You're you're yeah. you're with your ex. Even if you have a new man, you're still calling and interacting with your ex. How about this call right here? Did he leave yet? Is he gone? Is he gone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gone. <laughs> No self respect. <laughs> I would say, yeah, he go. Mm-hmm. That's how it sounds, yeah, too. Yeah, he go. Yeah, he oh, go. That's how it goes, too. Yeah, he yeah, go. Where I saw going? you with him. He don't look like a fun person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you wasn't you yeah. smiling or nothing. And you know you like to have you don't fun. Even have fun. <laughs> <laughs> what he mad at? <laughs> uh huh. There you go, Jim. <laughs> I make you laugh. Yeah, we make you laugh. Yeah, I'll you, you, take you to you, Top Golf and all kind of stuff. You deserve better. If you threw yeah. that one out there. Too. Hey, you, you we have to make better. ourselves look good. We gonna throw that. So you're back at Chili's, huh? <laughs> 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 Uh, how about this one right here? This is this the one right here. Uh-huh. I put a little something in your bank account. Look at it right now. Woo! Check it out. Check Woo! It out. <laughs> that was, you a good out. man, Charlie Brown. You that was the ma- magic words right there. Yeah. Hey, when well, you put account. something on their books, Lord have mercy. Okay, we're, we're back together. <laughs> yeah, we're coming home <laughs> instantly. I love you. Come on back home. <laughs> Check out your cash app. Yes. Yes. Check your cash yes. app, girl. <laughs> well, that's the best thing ever happened. Well, oh, cash man, that changed the world. Cash so out, man. Well, well, not if you're yeah, the mother like of a 22-year-old. It's not. No. <laughs> oh no, no, it's different. Then. Worst it's invention different. ever. Yeah. <laughs> this is the worst ever, right? All right, we're gonna keep this conversation going. You can do that on Steve Harvey FM. Coming up next, it is the nephew with "Run That Prank Back." Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, we have a treat for you. Our girl, Regina King, will be yeah. our special guest. Yeah, she's going to tell I her, love her. Tell us. I that, love her. Oh, she's, oh, she's everything, isn't she's she? Gonna be here. Um, mm-hmm. She's going to tell us about the blockbuster award winning movie she stars in. It's called If Beale Street Could Talk. Uh, plus, in today's entertainment news, Gladys Knight, you guys hear about this? Gladys Knight is going to sing the national anthem at the Super Bowl. Gladys, yeah. Midnight they train in Georgia, Gladys, baby. Yeah. Uh-huh. Girlie, <laughs> I just sent my mother. Don't get no work. <laughs> <laughs> she just going to do the pips like that? <laughs> <laughs> they made her what she is today. <laughs> <laughs> she said she was honored for the opportunity. I, I don't care. I just, I I just, I just said, sent my mom to see the, Gladys. What about the pips? Nothing for the pips? <laughs> no. It's just, it's just Gladys. Just, it's just Gladys. She made her what she is today. She didn't make what that. What they going to sing on the national ago. anthem? That's a long time ago. All right, let's get to the prank, nephew. What you got? Wow, Run man, that prank back. Cold. <laughs> All right, here it is. Your wife is cheating on both of us. I hate what? this. Prank. Man. <laughs> man, this boy's good. Run this, y'all. Hello? I'm trying to reach Terrence, please. Who's this? My name is Mark. How you doing, brother? I work with your wife, Veronica. We're on the same sales floor together. Oh, uh, is, is everything all right there, or what's going on? No, no, no. Everything's straight here on, at the job. No, not a problem at all at the job, but I wanted to... Is she um... all right, or is everything all right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's all right. She's perfectly fine, man. Um, I just, oh. I just, you know, uh, I, I actually, like I said, my name is Mark, man. You don't remember me, Terrence, but I just wanted to talk to you. Like I say, um, you know, I got some things on that was, that's been bothering me for a minute, and I, you know... I just I just kind of wanted to reach out to you and, you know, just kind of have like a little little heart-to-heart talk with you, man, so maybe, you know, uh, you know, we can get things in a, in a, in a better position. But I just, wanted, I, I just wanted me and you to have a conversation. Wait a minute. Did, how, how'd you get my – did Veronica give you my number or how did you get my number? That's what I'm trying to – like, what's going on? Uh, I mean, I had, I had, I've had your number. I just, I, just, uh, I just hadn't never reached out to you before. But like I say though, man, this 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 has been bothering me for a minute, and I wanted to get it off my chest so you and I can try to, I guess, fix this whole issue. But I I just want us to see if we can fix it, you know? Well, what, well fix the issue? What's the issue? I don't understand. I'm I'm not following you. I don't understand what, like, what is the issue? So, but now you know. Like I said, I went on and got the man, nerve to get you. Spit it out, spit it out, brother. Spit it out. Talk to me. What's going on? <sighs> Your wife, man is cheating on both of us. And we got to figure out how, we got to do something about this, man. I, I'm, did you say she's eating on both of us? What did you say? I, I didn't she she is cheating. Like she is cheating on the both of us, bro. Wait a minute. 
It sounds like you said cheating. I don't know what you. Ver- Veronica you know is. I mean? ver- listen to me, Terrence. Veronica is cheating on both of us. You say Veronica's cheating on me and me. You know, and we got it. We got to figure out what we're gonna do, man. But as a husband, I got You got to. I'm gonna need you to step up and get this thing in order. What you talking about? You say Veronica is cheating on me with you? No, no. She cheating on both of us with somebody else. I, I'm, I'm no, I've been noticing her going out with this, uh, you know, going to lunch with this other cat. So I, I'm like, I got pissed off about it. So I said, you know what? I can't take it no Wait more. I'm calling Terrence. Wait, you saying to me that my wife has been cheating around the job with somebody else? She cheating on both of us, dude. I don't get what you mean. If my wife is cheating on me and you calling me to tell me that she's cheating on me, I appreciate that. But I don't get what you're saying she's you know, both of us, they, I don't get that part. I don't understand what you mean. Are well, me and Veronica have been, you know, kind of cool, you know, last eight months to a year. We've been, you know, pretty tight here at the job. You know what I'm saying? So, Listen, what you mean y'all been cool? That's what I don't understand. Like, what do you mean y'all been cool? Because that's my wife. Tell me what you're talking about. You okay, all I'm saying is me, me, me and her been real cool. We've been real tight, you know. Sometimes we, we take lunch and then, you know, don't come back. That's our thing, though. But, you know, now, you know, I'm noticing, you know, she, she done went out, you know, she done went to lunch a couple of times with this brother named Alan. And I'm like, okay, no, nah, no, nah, it ain't finna go down like this here. You know what I'm saying? Are you f***ing my wife, man? Hey, that's that's not why I called you. I called Are you to you f- f- my wife? That's what I want to know. I'm telling you about this dude named Alan. I need you to step up as the husband and but, fix this. But you telling me. That my wife is cheating on both of us. There ain't no cheating on both of us. If she's cheating, she's cheating on me. You telling me that you're with my wife too? That you've been messing around with my wife? I don't that's not the, what you're saying, brother. Th- that's not the part I'm trying to talk about. I'm trying to talk about this dude named Alan, man. That's what no, I'm trying to get I, out. No, no, we're going to get to Alan. We're going to get to Alan. you saying that my wife, man, it's some crazy sh- Yo, you know what, man? I'm about to put my foot right up your Cause they, what, what, I don't play those games. She's with her. She's with me. We messing around. We doing this and doing that. It don't work like that. You understand what I'm saying? Dude, I hear what you're saying. But the I, beef ain't with me. The beef the is beef with Allen. The, the beef is dog. with you. My no, she messing, over, with she messing you. over both of us with Allen, dog. I'm about to call her on three-way because there's some b- right here. I'm telling okay, you right well, now. Okay, hold on, bro. I just want you to deal with Allen. Are you at the job right now? I'm, I'm at, I'm at the job, yeah. Foot. I'm about to come put my foot all in your You understand me? No, I I hear you, man. Allen is the one that then blew this thing out of proportion, dog. She messing over me and you with this here. There ain't no me and you, I don't share. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. I, I, I no, mean, I, you don't I follow- hear me. You don't hear me. I don't share. There ain't no sharing that goes on over here. Okay, okay. Do you follow right. me? I do, I do. I'm just saying, you know. What are you saying? Meet me right that, now. Meet me right now. I'm about to come up here where you at right now. Where are you at? I'm at you the at job the- where, 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 where Ronnie at. I call her Ronnie. I'm at the right. job where you Ronnie at. Where, I call her Ronnie. I call, I call Veronica Ronnie. I mean, that's my little I'm nickname to her. I'm All right, but, but, up there. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, Ronnie. Ronnie. Ain't Ronnie. No hold on, you hold keep on she right here. One, she's right where? She, she, she's she right, right here. here. Right here. Put her on the phone. You want to put her on the huh? phone? Put her okay. on the phone. Okay, cool, man. Here, cool. But can I tell you what she's saying? I don't want to hear what she's saying. I want her on the phone right now. Okay, but can I tell you what she's telling me to tell you? She ain't telling you to tell me a damn thing. Because the only thing that you're going to be getting is my foot up your. Okay, okay. But, 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 but Ronnie wants me to tell you this, man. Just listen to me, Terrence. She wants me to tell you that this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your wife, Veronica. <laughs> you know what? I don't play this. I'm going to f*** all y'all up up here, man. I'm going to f*** all y'all up. I'm going to give you an old school a- woman. Y'all ain't even right for that. You all right, man? I'm no, I'm not all right. I'm in the car. I'm sweating. I was on my way over there. I'm about to go to jail messing around with y'all. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this, man. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? You are.
already know. It's the Harvey Morning Show. All right, thank you, nephew. Coming up at the top of the hour, Gladys Knight, as we mentioned, will sing the national anthem at the Super Bowl, and Greg Leakes apologizes to Nene, his wife, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up in 20 minutes, guys, our friend, actress Regina King, will be our special guest. She's going to tell us about the movie, If Beale Street Could Talk. Uh, But first, in entertainment news, yeah, that's real nice. Can't wait for that. Gladys Knight will sing the national anthem before Super Bowl 53. Now, at least they got somebody who can really, really sing. Okay. Yes, yes, Mm -hmm. yes. The Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, that is Gladys Knight, and seven-time Grammy Award winner will add a hometown connection when the big game is played February 3rd at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. Uh, Gladys says she's proud to use her voice to unite and represent our country in her hometown of Atlanta. The NFL recently announced their new social justice platform, Inspire Change, and she says she is both honored to be a part of its inaugural year. She's the latest in a parade of pop legends who've sung the anthem at previous Super Bowls. That includes Cher, Aretha Franklin, Diana Ross, and Whitney Houston. Wow. Mm. Mm. Uh, did I say Diana Ross? Not Diana Ross. She did halftime. Uh, so, Carla, you have some more entertainment news from uh, the reality TV world. What's going on with Greg Lu- uh, uh, Greg Leakes? Well, you know what? We know that Greg Leakes, uh, Shirley, Tommy Jr., and Jay, he's in the mm-hmm. fight for his life, you know? Right. Yeah. We right. Know, yeah. Right. yeah. And we know that Nene, his wife, has been right there by his side oh, as yeah. he battles stage three of colon cancer. Mm-hmm. But there was something that happened between them. We don't really know what went down between the two of them, but it was bad enough that... I guess that Greg felt like he had to go to social media to apologize to Nene. He posted this beautiful picture of his wife and with the caption, we always hurt the ones we love because they oh. allow us to hurt them rather than snap back. Mm-hmm. So he went on to say that he's tired of hurting her because she deserves more for her hard efforts and tireless hours spent on me. And then Grim- Greg finished up the caption saying, I pray to God, to get it together. She's done no wrong. This is all on me. Cancer will change your life. So while Greg hasn't, you know, specified what he's apologizing for, another post kind of hinted that he's been mean to the doctors and to his wife. And so he has asked for forgiveness from his wife and from America. And he had a hashtag that included hashtag never been here before and hashtag I'm scared too. So, that's gotta yeah, be painful, that's, that, that takes man, we got to pray for Greg. That. Yeah, yeah. A prayer of healing for right. Greg. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cancer is an emotional disease. Yeah. Uh, it's it's mm. tough. It's tough. But we're praying for the and that's, Leaks family. Yeah, and that's yeah. big of him. Uh, uh, yes. Everything he's going through, he comes back and uh, realizes that he's hurt his wife in some sort of way. And uh, a bi- it takes a big that man to do that. It yeah. Does. Yes. Yeah. So it does. Yeah. Big and apologize yeah. publicly. Yeah. You know? Publicly. Yeah. Wow. Because mm-hmm. I didn't know what was going on. Mm-mm. I yeah. heard about it and I said, what is this about? So I got some information about Sometimes it. Sometimes so sick people can be very mean and you have to forget. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just a way to snap out. And if they snap out at the person that's there, you know? Yes. Trying to help them. Mm-hmm. That is so true, it's, Jay. I mean, you know, it's the medication, the, the pain, and all of that, emotions that they're going through. So you're right. You're right. But we're going to pray for the Leaks family. Absolutely. You got this, Greg. Prayers of healings going up. Mm-hmm. Hang in there, Greg. All right, mm-hmm. we're going to switch gears now in national news, guys. President Trump has fired back at House Speaker Nancy Pelosi a day after she asked him to postpone the State of the Union speech, citing the strain on security personnel during the government shutdown. Uh, Trump has canceled a trip abroad that uh, Pelosi was scheduled to take on a military plane. In a letter to Pelosi, Trump says, due to the shutdown, I am sorry to inform you that your trip to Brussels, Egypt and Afghanistan uh, has been postponed. We will reschedule this seven day excursion when the shutdown is over. He's petty. Uh, yeah, He's tip petty, for tack. Man. Come He's on, petty. Pet, petty. Yeah, that's petty. very yeah. petty. Tony. But in the words of Hoppo yeah. from the movie, get off the plane. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the letter also says that she's free to fly commercial airlines. 
Wow, what a dig. You know, if I was her, I'd just do it that <laughs> yeah. way, just to show him. Yeah. yeah. And put it on yeah. his tab. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. The trip yeah, because he's trying to just show her who's in charge. Yeah. That's yeah. The best it's tit for tat. It is. It definitely yeah. is. I wow. just hope they I, I hope the Democrats like stay that. strong and don't break, man. Just just stay yeah. in there. Don't crack. Well, you know what, Tommy? I think if they do break, it's for the federal workers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that their heart I know. is... Yeah, to try to find an end or compromise for them because they're the ones that are suffering right now over a wall. And and if you do break, don't give them the wall. Just break to get people back to work. Exactly. Tell tell them you're going to give them the money for the wall and then don't give it to them. (laughs) <laughs> That's what he does. He, yeah. he, 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 he does. We have bill collectors that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Remember that whole DACA yeah. situation? He did that. Yeah, he stiffed a lot of people. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's when they gave him the money. And then they attached the DACA bill to that, and he turned that down. Yeah, he, he did. Down, yeah. right. Wasn't and, it like stun one, Mitch McConnell with that, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know how anything to do it. Don't be bringing my name up in this man. <laughs> <laughs> you are so crazy. <laughs> one more time. Come on. I don't have nothing to do with it. That's his, he said he'd take full responsibility for it. I ain't got nothing to do with it, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to get these marbles out of my mouth. <laughs> That's how he sounds, too, Jack. <laughs> Man. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't look like a lot of things are, are going to get done until the government gets back to work. That's what it looks like anyway. But you know what Trump is really doing? He is making it so that we, in our lifetime, will never, ever forget Obama. Ever. Ever forget Obama. Mm. Or his legacy. Yeah. Or his legacy, right. right. Don't yeah. we miss him. <laughs> Woo, you better talk. <laughs> Don't we miss him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, we, you know what it is? We just miss a real president, a presidential president, too. We miss that as well. Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, actress mm-hmm. Regina King will be our special guest right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Our special guest, everybody is an award-winning actress that has too many blockbuster movies and television series Mm. to name. I'm telling you, but today she's joining us to talk about her newest project that's in theaters right now. I've seen the clip. Shirley's actually seen the movie. yeah. So this is really good. And Shirley came back ranting and rave about it. Yeah, uh, It's called uh, If Bill Street Could Talk. And it's uh, projected to have a huge presence at this year's Oscars Awards. So let's talk to the star of the movie. Please welcome to the show, everybody, with her acting ass, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Regina King. Yeah. Hey. Welcome. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Hi, hey. Regina. I still watch the Boondocks. <laughs> <laughs> and 227. <laughs> I love the Boondocks. (laughs) Well, congratulations, first of all, we have to say, Regina, on winning the Golden Globes and Critics' Choice Award for Best Supporting Actress. Man. Man, oh, man. Thank you. Yeah. Pretty exciting. (laughs) I'll say. uh, You think? (laughs) Yeah. You know what? I have to be honest with you, Regina. When I first heard the title, If Beale Street Could Talk, I thought it was going to be about Beale Street in Memphis. Me too. yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you're not the only one. Um, Uh I think when um, James Baldwin Mm -hmm. uh, wrote the book, it was saying that there's a Bill Street in every city. Yeah. You know, because the movie takes place in Harlem, and the book story actually takes place in Harlem. So there is a version of a Bill Street in, in, in Harlem, in L.A. Wherever you are, that's your version of a Bill Street. Yeah. Your role in this movie, it was just, I mean, fantastic. You played that loving mother, that mother that never gives up, that believes in her children, that loves her husband, and just just family. And I, I love that about the movie. And you won these awards. How does that make you feel, Regina? Well, it, I mean, look, <laughs> and I'm not going to lie. Winning always feels good. Yeah. Hell yeah. Regardless <laughs> if it's of the 100-yard dash or... Uh, and a, and a, a Golden Globe Award. But <laughs> right. it, it's especially exciting because for us, James Baldwin is like a Shakespeare of our time. Yeah. You know, he yeah. we read his essays, we watched his interviews, and he just was always such a passionate person and always spoke for us so well and, and captured the 
Black American experience so well. So to be in a project that's bringing younger people to his words and knowing the history of James Baldwin and what he means to us, that's that's an honor. I mean, th- th- this is the first American adaptation of a James Baldwin novel, and I get to say that I was in it. Like, that's kind of badass. <laughs> yes. yes, it is. It is badass. It is. 832 Hold on, guys. We'll have more with Regina King at 34 after the hour. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, we just love the movie If Beale Street Could Talk. Our girl actress Regina King is here. She's going to tell us more about the movie and... Uh, Happy belated birthday to you, by the way, Regina, before we get too far into the interview. Your birthday was earlier this week, right? Uh, oh, oh, she a Capricorn, birthday. too. Uh-oh. uh-oh. Yeah. 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 Oh. January 15th. I'm oh, you better go, day. Martin Luther King, girl. Yeah, baby. See? <laughs> see, look at you. You better know. Girl, you <laughs> right there. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther <laughs> King and Regina King. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. The king. Ooh, you know, if I'd have been in school, I'd have had that lie working. <laughs> oh, I did. I did. It lasted for about three years, and then the jig was up. I got caught. <laughs> That's but yeah, uncle. I used to use, I used to say that he was my uncle. And, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, this is how I knew I was going to be an actor. I would act really sad in school. And, <laughs> you know, my teacher would be like, it's your birthday. What's wrong? And I would say, well, it's also my uncle's birthday. And she was like, who's your uncle? And I was like, the late, great Dr. Go, King. girl, yes. yes we tried to That's make right. his birthday a holiday. And we get a lot of resistance from the government. Oh, yeah, I would go all oh, in. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Did not have to do any work, no tests, nothing. Yes. And it lasted like two years, and my mom came to pick me up one day, and mm-hmm. I was outside playing Foursquare, <laughs> and I looked in the window. It's like, you know, like you could feel when your parents are looking at oh, you. Yeah. You feel oh, yeah. the whooping on its way. Uh, yes. And yeah. I turned around and saw her looking at me like, Oh, you gonna get it. It's and a week at home. Hey, Regina, in the school talking to the teacher. <laughs> Just looking out the window at your little lying ass. Yeah. <laughs> That was a good one, though. I, I, I'm proud of you, though, because that's the damn show. <laughs> I would have went with it. That's why there's so much Oscar buzz about you, Regina King, and, and your role as Sharon in If Bill Street Could Talk. Uh, a great cast in this movie. Um, we got to see newcomer Kiki Lane do an amazing job as your daughter. Mm. What, a, what a great young actress she is. She plays Trish in the movie. At, as as well as Stefan James, who starred as Fonny in the movie. So, I mean, what was it like working with these young up-and-coming actors? It was a treat because both Stefan and Kiki are, they're not in this to be celebrities. They're like, they are truly artists. They are actors. They study. They they do their homework. They are professional. And, you know, you always are kind of, you, you're hesitant when you come into something and you know you're going to have um, young talent. You don't know how serious they're going to take it. Mm-hmm. And... They understood the responsibility that they had, and they held each other up. They were just amazing partners for wow. each other. It was, it was a joy to watch. I'm, I cannot wait to see what else Kiki is gonna do. The, her next film is Native Son, so that's how serious wow, she right? is about. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. yeah, wow. she's coming for it like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really did feel the love between this young couple. You really felt it between them. So we look for great things from them. But, Regina, we're so happy that, you you know, you took the time to just stop by and say hey to us. Anything else you want to tell people that haven't seen the movie If Beale Street Can Talk? I just encourage people to go out because this is just not a, only a love story between um, a, a young couple, but it's, you see the love for a father that a father has for his daughter. You see the love that Coleman character and I that we have for each oh, other. Yeah. You don't often get to see that, especially for um, pieces that are period pieces that mm-hmm. take place. You know, this takes place mm-hmm. in 1970, and you get to see us loving on each other. You get to see yeah. sisters love on each other and on. especially yeah. for young um, women mm-hmm. to see 
how a young man is supposed to care for them wow. yes, and, and love them with care, mm-hmm. it's a beautiful thing to see. Hey, y'all, listen. Uh, if Bill Street Could Talk is in theaters right now, when you go to the theater, mm-hmm. make sure your ticket has If Bill Street Could Talk on it. Do not accept anything else. If they try to give you another ticket, get management up to the window so we can get credit for these movies. Best mm-hmm. thing to do is to order the tickets online. That way there ain't no trouble. You walk in with your receipt and that's it. If Bill Street could talk, star one of the great ones out there. I'm telling you, this girl can really go, Woo! man. She got the chops. Yep. Regina King, we love you, girl. I uh, love you back. Appreciate you. Bye. Congratulations on everything, girl. Up next, it is the nephew with the prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, guys, right about four minutes after, it's today's Strawberry Letter. The subject for today, all in the family. Wait till you hear this one. But right now, it is a nephew on deck with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? Shirley? Mm-hmm. Adult daycare. Huh? What's that Adult about? daycare. We you do know these exist, right? Uh-oh. It's an adult daycare. Here it is. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Miss Sharon, please. Yes, this is Sharon. Miss Sharon, this, uh, my name is Evan. I'm giving you a call from uh, Adult Daycare. Okay. Adult what? Adult Daycare. My, my name is Evan, and I, I, I got your number and all your information here on file. Um, it looks like you're going to be joining us starting on Monday, so we're excited to have you. And I, was, I wanted to just give you a call and kind of give you the lay of the land of what we have here and, and how you, how much fun you're going to have being here most of the day uh, with us. So from my, my understanding, you're going to be here probably the majority of this year. What are you talking, what are you talking about being there? Where? Being with- here at the, the adult daycare. Adult daycare. Where? Where's that? What are you talking about? Okay. Evan? You, is that what you said your name is? Evan? My name My name is Evan. Yes, ma'am. And, and okay. your daughter is Diane? Diane. That's my daughter. You know my daughter? Yes. yes. Well, she's the one that has you signed up. You're going right. to be at the adult daycare, so I'm assuming she's going to be dropping you off every morning. I don't and know I, what the hell you're was... talking about, Evan. Evan, hang on a second, all right? First of all, I don't know who you are. You don't know who I am. I don't know how the f- you know who my daughter is, but this is this is really uh, inappropriate and weird and like you're trying to get what do you what do you want? Okay. You want money well, out of me? Are you like a solicitor? No, 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 ma'am. No, 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 not at all, Miss Sharon. No, I'm, your daughter has signed you up to be yeah. here at the adult daycare during the day, so yeah. she's going to. I don't know what you're talking about. There's no way she would do that. Adult daycare? What do I need adult daycare for? For what? For well, what? evidently, are you home alone most of the time during the day? Who cares if I'm home alone? Who's a, why are you asking me that? You trying to break into my house? No. no I, I don't know no, who no. you are, man. I don't know who Ms. the hell you are. I know, okay. I, I call, look, I'm hooked up to that uh, 911 stuff thing. Like, I could just do a panic call right now, and they'll trace this call, and they will come to you and arrest you because you're harassing me. No, right? no, you got no, that, no, no. Okay, Miss Sharon, I'm not harassing you. Your daughter, Diane, came in and yes, signed Diane. you up. Yes, she signed you up for, to go to this daycare Monday to yeah. Friday while she's at yeah. work. So she's going to be dropping you off, and then she'll pick you up in the evenings on her way home from work. I don't, know, I don't know where you got that from. I don't know who told you that. Yeah, you got my daughter's name, and this is really freaking me out, you know, a little bit over here, Ivan. Because I don't know why you know my name, you know my daughter's name. Uh, this is like... I, the only reason I, I know you all's name, Miss, Miss Sharon, is because she came in and gave all the information, and she has paid for you to come to the adult daycare on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Hey, Evan, you know what? You sound like a nice guy. You know what I mean? Like, you're smooth. You got a nice voice. You're, you're, you know, like you know what to say. I don't know who the hell you are, though. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I, you know what I, I, I mean? Know know like, I'm I, not going to no daycare center. I'm not going to a daycare center. Okay, I'm not but, going to the day because I'm fine. Just get that through your head. There's nothing wrong with me. I stay home. I got a dog. I walk the dog. I go grocery shopping. My daughter comes over. Everything's fine. 
right. I don't need no daycare center. Okay. Well, you have, understand have, what I'm saying? Is there, is there is there a reason why she would sign you up, ma'am? She must think yeah. she must be yeah. looking out for your your the best you know your health. Let me ask I, I you know. something. Let me ask you: Are you single? Am I what? Are you single? Are you married? What, what does that have to do with anything? I, I'm not coming to no daycare center, all right, Evan? Like, if you want to come to my house and you what, want to what? see how I live, you can. Uh, uh, I'm no, I don't. I'm I, switching I, this I, I'm switching it up. Okay, I don't need to come to your home. I'm more concerned about making sure you're comfortable here at the adult daycare when you get here on Monday. Yeah, I'm not coming there. That's it. I'm not coming there because there's nothing wrong with me. I'm not coming out of my house. But I'll tell you okay. what, Evan. You... I don't know. Like I, I like your voice. I just like your voice. You know what uh, I mean? Miss, wait a minute, Miss Shane. How long? Wait, um, how old are you? Uh, how old are you? Um, I'm um, fifty. Fifty. You ever been with an eighty-nine-year-old lady? Wow. Wow. I'm eighty-nine, and you sound really nice. That's oh, all. Like uh, at first, I was scared of you. At first, I was. I'll be honest. I was scared of you. <laughs> And now I'm not. Like, I don't know why. I'm just not. You know what I mean? Like, you just sound nice. Yeah. Um, I, well, I don't know who you uh, are, but. Okay. So, uh, well, this okay, is. Will you be there? Is, will you be at the daycare this, center? Like you. Because I, I like to meet you. I, I'll, I'll be at the daycare when you arrive on Monday. But, I mean, I'm not. Um, huh. Miss Sharon. Uh, I won't be able to. Um, oh, I, mean, yeah. I like that, Miss Sharon. That's nice. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, okay. So, should I should I reach out to Diane about this? Yeah, whole issue? reach out to her. Reach out to her. Sure, reach out to her. Okay, but you're not gonna. Like it. Yeah, go ahead. You're not gonna come in Monday. I might. I might. I might. I might. I don't know. If you're gonna be there, I just might. But, but Shannon, it's not about me. It's about you coming in, and you're gonna. This is where you're gonna be uh, Monday through Friday from yeah. ten. Yeah. All right. Listen. You know, and, there's 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 yeah, there's other people yeah, your like age it. here. There's there's a lot of ladies your age and a lot of ladies. men your I'm age like, here. I'm not in the ladies. I'm not in the ladies. I'm not in the ladies. I'm I didn't. I, I'm not turn. Yeah. Not into it. I'm in the. I'm into you. Okay. Um. I think it's a situation like your 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 daughter doesn't want you to be by yourself. Listen, yeah. Could you? Could I call you back? Can, Can you I call, call me you back? back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let oh. me call you back. Let me call oh. you back in a couple of minutes. I'm on the oh. and I got pulled my off of the thing. This <laughs> is the first this has ever happened to me. Okay, uh, Miss Sharon, can I tell you who I am? I am nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your daughter Diane got me to prank call you, but I promise you, you're different. You're no. different. <laughs> I promise you, I'm different. I promise you, I'm different. You're related that, to Steve Harvey, like the guy on TV. That, that's my Get uncle. Get out of here. He is gorgeous. Evan, call me back. All right. Oh, call oh, me back. Okay. I can tell. Oh, all right. Oh. Okay. I love you. Oh my God. <laughs> Come on, you get get a prank or some adult. <laughs> you didn't see that coming, did you? You didn't see that. I did not see it coming. I felt like I got pranked, you know? Uh, yeah, really? Really? On the real. That's a mama like was trying to holler. She Mama. trying to dip in the chocolate, boy. <laughs> you sound good. Are you black? You sound good. You sound good. You sound good. You were like, oh, All right, let's oh, put God. it out there. Tampa Improv, this coming week, baby. Get ready, get ready. That is January 24th, 25th, and 26th. Everything is sold out, but the nephew added a 4 o'clock show on Saturday. I call it the matinee show. For those that's getting ready, want to go to church on Sunday. I got it for you. Come on in to the 4 o'clock, and we're going to get your laugh on, get you back home by 6.30, have your church clothes ironed and ready, and you'll be there on time. See what I do? That's how I do it. That's for, for the Lord. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. He is yeah, tired now. Do he tithes. <laughs> 10%, Jay. All right. Listen, thank you, nephew. Uh, up next, it is the Strawberry Letter. Subject for today, all in the family, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Coming up at 41 after the hour, we're going to talk about Cardi B and her opinion on the government shutdown. Yes, she Cardi has B. one. But right now, it is time for today's Strawberry Letter. Uh, and if you need advice on relationships, on dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please, please, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM. And just click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to do this one. Yeah. Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. Subject, all in the family. Hmm. Dear Stephen Shirley, I am keeping a secret from my sweetie, and I need your advice. When I was 18 years old and a senior in high school, I was in love with a beautiful girl who was 18 and went to a neighboring school. We were each other's first everything. Our puppy love ended when we went away to college. I got a good job and got married right after college. And by the time I was 37, I was divorced and I got a job transfer back to the city I grew up in. Shortly after I moved back, I ran into my high school sweetheart. We had both matured in good ways. She was single and still looked as good as she did 20 years ago. We started dating and now we are inseparable. It's been two years, and I want to marry this woman. We spend a lot of time around each other's family, and everyone thought we were perfect for each other until my great Aunt Doreen came to visit and started snooping around. Aunt Doreen said my girlfriend looked familiar, and she went and dug up an old, dusty picture of our family tree. Aunt Doreen told my parents and I that the love of my life is the great-granddaughter of one of my grandfather's first cousins. I was like, what? say what? I didn't want to believe it, but the proof was there. I promised my family that I would break the news to my girl, but I don't know how to tell her that. We are such distant cousins that it seems pointless to break up over it. But I must admit that I am worried about the gene pool being too close and us having a child with problems, if you know what I mean. How do I break the news to her? Should we risk it all and stay together? Wow. Uh, oh, boy. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. This is something. I, I don't, I mean, the great-granddaughter of one of your grandfather's first cousins I don't even know if you guys are still really related. Well, I mean, the, the bloodline, I don't know. I, I mean, this is, I don't even know if you guys are still related, honestly. I mean, I guess somewhere way, 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 way down the line, um, you know, there may be a drop of blood or something, you know, in, in your veins or something. But um, I would tell her, I would just be straight up and tell her but I would, you know, take one of those ancestry t tests or something um, and, and find out for sure if you guys are really related or is Aunt Doreen just being messy and, uh, you know, because her life is miserable or something. This this is a tough one because I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. The great granddaughter of my grandfather's first cousins. First of all, you have to sit her down and you have to tell her. And then from there, you guys got to work on this uh, together. And I don't know if that means stay together. I, I just don't know. Should you risk it all and stay together? No, not without finding out more information. And that's all I have, Steve. It ain't really nothing to have in this letter. This all in the family. Let's start with fat ass Aunt Doreen. <laughs> he didn't say her side. That's what that is. You he know, already, say... I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Old big bitter ass Aunt Doreen yeah. that came in here. Ain't got nobody. Ain't happy. Don't want nobody else to have no damn body. That's all this is. The setup in here. You done, we was dating this girl in high school, everything, everything. Puppy love, y'all went away to college, it yeah. ended. Got a good job, got married right after college. By the time you was 37, that's 19 years later. You was divorced, got a job transfer back to the city you grew up in. You moved back, you ran into her. You had both matured in good ways. She was single and still looked like she did 20 years ago. Lord have mercy. Jackpot. We started dating and now we inseparable. It's been two years and I want to marry this woman. We spent all kind of time around each other. Family. Everybody thought we were perfect 
for each other until my great aunt Doreen bought her <laughs> ass in the town and started <laughs> Snoop. No, Steve, nothing. You don't see that in there? No. <laughs> ain't Doreen ain't got That's nothing me. else to do and said my girlfriend looked familiar. She went and dug up an old, dusty picture of our family tree. Now, hold on. You spend a lot of time around each other's family, and everybody thought we was perfect for each other. You been around her family, she been around your family. Ain't nobody said nothing to old Doreen came in. Let's not say that. It says it right there in the <laughs> If you read carefully. Now, everybody, he tried to say it until my great aunt. Yeah, ain't nobody your great aunt. That, what he, that's short to my great aunt Doreen. Came to visit and started snooping around. Aunt Doreen said my girlfriend looked familiar. Dug up an old dusty picture of my family tree. Aunt Doreen told my parents and I that the love of my life, now listen to me, y'all, mm-hmm. is the great-granddaughter of one of my grandfather's mm-hmm. first cousins. That's no. a lot going on. I That's can't so even track that. No. What is that? Let me Damn. let me show it again. The love of your life is the great granddaughter. Now, when you're the great granddaughter, that means that one of her grandfathers is the great granddaughter of one of her grandfather's first cousins. What? I know, it's too much. Boy, that's so far far off in the line. Mm -hmm. And you know how you get to be cousins? You marry somebody else. What? You got to marry somebody else. See, to have a cousin, a cousin don't have to be, you can marry a cousin oh. and be called a cousin. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Oh, what you're you follow yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, you ain't in the bloodline. You yeah. married into it. Yeah. Yeah. You can be a cousin because yeah. you married in. Mm-hmm. Right. Or like a niece and nephew that could be, uh-huh. you could be married. Aunt, Come on now. Aunt, aunt or uncle. Yeah. Come yeah. on now. Uh-huh. You know how yeah. families in-laws. is. in-laws. Yeah. 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 I was like, say what? I ain't want to believe it, but the proof was right there. All right, all right, Steve, we're going to have part two of your response coming up at 23 after the hour. Subject all in the family. Right there. Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on, let's recap today's Strawberry Letters. Subject all in the family. This dude ran up in his old high school sweetheart after 19 years of being away, got a divorce. Got transferred back to the city he grew up in, ran up into the high school, sweetheart. She's still single, looking good, as she did 20 years ago. They started dating and not in seven. It's been two years, man. I want to marry this woman. We spend all time together with each other's family. Everybody thought we perfect each other. And then, Saint Doreen came to town. <laughs> Would you stop? <laughs> I'm telling you, she big old, out of that church hat on, you know, Still care Bible, that's her. <laughs> Set up in here, man. Aunt Doreen said my girlfriend looked familiar. Mm-hmm. She went and dug up an old dusty picture of our family tree. Aunt Doreen told my parents and I that the love of my life is the great granddaughter of one of my grandfather's first cousins. Now we can't even track this. No. I don't even know how to say it to you. That's so damn crazy. (laughs) And then the dude said, I was like, say what? I ain't want to believe it, but the proof was right there. My question is right where? What proof? This old ass picture. (laughs) This old ass picture, she ain't in it. Mm -mm. I promised my family that I would break the news to my girl, but I don't know how to tell her that. We are such distant cousins that it seems pointless to break up over it. But I must admit that I'm worried about the gene pool too close and us having a child with problems, if you know what I mean. How do I break the news to her? Should I risk it all and stay together? Well, first of all, I don't think there's no reason to break up. 
I think you should go in there, sit your girl down, do some research, go over the facts. You're going to find out that y'all are so far away that actually it's legal for y'all to marry. Because y'all are so far away, man, that it don't, y'all ain't really related. And you could be somebody's cousin just by marriage. Yeah. See, but your big old aunt up in here, she don't want to bring none. She just want to destroy us. Aunt Doreen alone. That big ass aunt Doreen <laughs> knows her. Now I understand you. You <laughs> admit it, you know but, but but dog, you <laughs> gotta crazy. tell your girl. You gotta tell her. You're right. And just sit down and say, "This is what came up." You gotta tell her. Now you know. Look, if you know, mm-hmm. and it's like this: if you tell everybody. That the news came from big ass Aunt Doreen, ain't nobody gonna believe it no damn way. You know how much mess Aunt Doreen has started in the family. You got to deal with her. You know how many lies this woman has told. She is messy now. She been she by herself. She's single. That's why she had time to dig up that old dusty ass photo. Cause she ain't number photos left in her life. Everybody else done left her. But you know what, too, Steve? How many times have a lot of times people. Um, who aren't related at all. They get married or they're in a relationship and they start to look like each other. So it could just be a coincidence, you know, that they look alike. Surely, what? What? <laughs> Haven't you ever heard somebody, have, you've never heard <laughs> yes. anybody say that you guys yeah. have been going together so long or married Y'all so long, you, you start, yeah, yeah. you starting yeah. to look alike. I've been I've with Marjorie that. a long ass time. We don't look nothing alike. No, you don't. No, you, we don't want don't, her to no. look no. like that. ain't even to praise the Lord. No. I <laughs> and the moment she started looking like me, this is going to be over. I'm telling you right now. Ah, you so that, listen to me. <laughs> the vote's number three is right after that. <laughs> but, the damn uh, day but, she started looking like me. I'm walking clean up out there. But just to let you know, that is a thing, though. Some people, you know, <laughs> yeah, say that. Yeah. yeah, well, I tell you what, it better not be a thing up in here. <laughs> the day Marjorie started looking like tea, this is over. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, That's man. funny. Yeah, that can't happen. I, Shirley, I heard what you said today. Ooh, praise God that can't happen up in here. We, we can start acting like each other a little bit. Uh-huh. Sitting up there on, out, out there on vacation trying to smoke a cigar. I've never smoked a cigar. Yeah. Today is the first day that I'm smoking a cigar because they're throwing a birthday party for me. Oh, okay. 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 And, and You're you having all, a party? And you all are invited. Well, thank oh, you. Thank you. Well, look at that. It's really just supposed to be family, but y'all my work family. Okay. So okay. I'm inviting y'all okay. over to the I'm house. Over. Can you send a car for me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, wait what? on it. No, no, yeah, wait on it. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't drive over there? No, 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 yeah, I'm going to send it for you, Jay, yeah. Yeah, wait, <laughs> wait, wait right there. Well, if I know I'm going to the party, I'm going to be in a special way that I don't think I should be driving. You know <laughs> Jesus. But Steve, tell Marjorie, don't just invite us and don't let her know we're coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. She's going to be cool with it. She know. Okay. I don't never invite nobody to my house, so she's going to be stunned anyway. <laughs> and when now, you do, it's usually Are just you us. Tell us where this is, because I don't know where the house is. So, <laughs> Are you going to kick us out? Oh, he's going to do that. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Well, it's time to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go he's going to martin us. I look sure. forward to it. I no, do. you ain't got to worry about it. But you're going to enjoy the food, though. It's going to be real oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Play a cause. Hey, about so about 4 o'clock day, y'all fall through. Okay, I'm surprised you're having a party, Steve. I'm surprised, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't want one? To- oh, man, hell no. <laughs> Why, Steve? My girl always what, doing what stuff, man. What time is the party? What Four time? o'clock. Four? Yeah. He going to kick you out by 7.30. Four o'clock when? Hey, come well, on. It's, it's Friday. Friday. It's Friday today, so four to midnight. Woo! Oh. That's what, that's what the, that. the caterer is over with at four. But it's kind of like our New Year's Eve party. Our New Year's Eve, I mean, our Christmas Eve party. Oh, yeah. Was oh. Those hours. It was really good. Oh, you're I got some that. surprises for y'all. Y'all come on over, man. Thank y'all for everything. Happy birthday. Y'all have a great weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to yourself. Take it out the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 
I wish you got the letter. Fun. We got it. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm leaving now. We, we got a couple leave. more hours to go, at least an hour. You thought I was going to give it to you on the air? <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up in 10 minutes, Cardi B talks government shutdown. Wait till you hear this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, guys, Cardi B, yeah, I'm talking rapper Cardi B. Okay. Yeah, Mm -hmm. has some thoughts on the government shutdown herself, which at 27 days is now the longest uh, shutdown in government history, in U.S. history. It really, really is. I I mean, I really feel for these people now. They're having to make choices between paying for daycare, paying their car notes. Uh, yeah. One one woman uh, had to make a choice between paying her mortgage and paying for her uh, chemo treatment. She's got oh uh, yeah, oh stage God. three breast cancer. This is really oh. serious, you know? It, it's affecting people in, in ways you wouldn't even think of oh, ordinarily. Yes. That's a shame. Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, people are making all kinds of choices between, you know, do we eat or do we pay our car note? You know, and, and on a really more serious note, yeah, there was a woman uh, who had stage three breast cancer. She had to choose between paying her, uh, paying for her chemo treatment and uh, paying for her kids' daycare. Things like oh, this. Man. I mean, it's serious. Wow. You know, it's affecting people in ways that you would never think of ordinarily. Right. But uh, Which- Cardi B shared a passionate message via Instagram. Uh, This was a video yesterday afternoon. She criticized President Trump. Take a listen. Hey, y'all. I just want to remind y'all because it's been a little bit over three weeks, okay? It's been a little bit over three weeks. Trump is now ordering, as in summoning, federal government workers to go back to work without getting paid. Now, I don't want to hear y'all talking about, oh, but Obama shut down the government for 17 days. Yeah, for health care. So your grandma could check her blood pressure and you could go check your the gynecologist with no problem. Now, I know a lot of y'all don't care because y'all don't work for the government or y'all probably don't even have a job, but this is really serious, bro. This is crazy. Like, our, our country is in a hellhole right now. All for the wall. And we really need to take this serious. We, I feel like we need to take some action. I don't know what type of action because this is not what I do, but... I'm scared. This is crazy. And I really feel bad for these people that got to go to work to not get paid. Yeah. That's real she talk. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, you know what I mean? Even the way she said yeah. it, I'm cool yeah. with it. That's real yeah, talk. She made right. sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the, the point got across. Plenty right. of sense. And Cardi yeah. B speak. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, you know what I'm worried about? What? I'm worried about, uh, because we're already there, desperate measures. When people get to a certain extent where it's like this, mm-hmm. you don't know what they're going to do, man. And anything can start happening where it just, it becomes like all the over the place. you doing what you got to do to survive, and mm-hmm. that can get crazy. Did he say like the purge? I'm just asking like the purge. Really, I don't Jay? Know the purge. <laughs> Not the purge, Jay. Come on. The movie? Yeah, the movie. <laughs> like the, pur- the purge, Jay? Like pillaging and, and stuff. A lot of, yeah, yeah. One, a lot night. of yes. going. one night. One night. <laughs> Yeah, but the, man, I mean, it, you go you go into survival mode, man. Yeah, yeah but you know what, Tommy? Before before the shutdown, there were a lot of people already making choices about their medication and about mm-hmm. treatment for themselves because they just mm-hmm. didn't have the money. And this is just making it worse. And Trump don't give a damn. He just don't uh, give a no, damn. No, he's already said no. he's not backing down. And I no. hate that he said that. And I, I, I just, this is terrible. I hate where we are as a country right now. You know, uh, listen to the American people. They don't want the wall. You want the wall. They don't Man. want the wall. They want they want border security, yes. But those are two different things. I'm going to try to give y'all a, something to, on a little lighter note. Okay. Oh. Carla, okay? Well, we haven't heard it yet. <laughs> All right. So I got this meme today that says the government better start paying TSA agents. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh. Man. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let stuff go through, huh? <laughs> but you know what? It, it's I, I was going to bring up the TSA agents, Tommy, because, you know, this is really serious. They are calling in it's sick. Very serious. Yeah, they're calling in sick because they don't yeah. want to work without pay. And then the ones that are working are working way over the time, the allotted time that they, they normally work. They can't work. keep an eye on everything like, yeah. they, they, like they normally do. It's yeah. impossible. Right, right. and, and things can facts. slip through yeah. security. Yeah. They yeah. can slip you through security. You can't do it all. Lack yeah. of manpower. Right, yeah. and they're telling you to get to the airport two and three hours ahead of time, you know, yeah. uh, because there there's a shortage there. And, um, 
you know, the Certain lines are going. Are yeah, shut down. the lines are going to be long. Right. Yeah. And, and let me tell you something. All these extra perks that you hear people have, how they have TSA pre-check, how you have clear. Trust mm-hmm. me, that means nothing now. You need to be there three hours ahead of time to make sure you get through that line. Yes, absolutely, yep. you do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I had a friend who tried to, she bought some gift cards, some Starbucks gift cards, because she travels a lot. Uh-huh. You know, she was passing out the gift cards to the workers, the TSA oh, workers, nice. and they yeah. couldn't take it. They was like, thank you for your generosity mm-hmm. and your offer, but we can't accept that. They're not you allowed know, to take won- nothing? They're not allowed to she, take well, it. These- it can be considered a bribe, right? You can't. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But they can yeah. take your damn peanut butter if you go through there with a big job. It don't ask me how I know, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is. Wow. We, we I, hopefully before the end of the month. I mean, they have to go another yeah, week hopefully. now. Yeah, hopefully this, by today's, month. Uh, today's Friday. Yeah, today's Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Waiting for, yeah. for right. Trump right. to come to his senses is never going to happen. Yeah. That's just not going to happen. Just, you just you well, got he all said the people it. hostage, man. All right, guys, uh, moving on. Coming up at the top of the hour, football talk, AFC versus NFC championship games, guys and ladies. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mm. Coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Okay, guys, Junior, Tommy, Jay, uh, what you got? This Sunday is the AFC versus NFC championship games. Junior? L.A. Rams, mm-hmm. Tommy, Jay. New Orleans Saints okay. in the dome. I got to say it. Oh, Rams. Jam Rams. <laughs> <laughs> Rams. That's what you going for, Jay? That's what you going for, Jay? I got L.A., man. Yeah. Come on, now. Oh, yeah. I'm with the N.O., Jay. I'm with the N.O. Yeah. I'm L.A. You going to go L.A., even, too? Even though I'm not even into it. But, yeah. I'm going L.A. with the seasoning yeah. I live in of L.A. the yeah. I bet you, I bet you I know who ain't going L.A. <laughs> you better say it. You better come over here and ask me. <laughs> Call a go. Let them know. Call <laughs> You better come over here and ask Mrs. Farrell. <laughs> who that nation? Down with them saints, that's, baby. That's because of Mr. Farrell. Yeah, right. Right. That whole house is order over there. Not in living in the house with Mr. Farrell. That's it ain't right. going uh-uh. down like that. Uh-uh. uh-uh. It's black and gold up in there. That who that nation? I'm married to a man from the West Bank, Louisiana. I wish you yes. would come in there. My <laughs> Carly, Wait. is it black and gold everywhere in the house? <laughs> Especially in his man cave. He got an autographed Drew Brees Frame jersey. Wow. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay, yes. Yeah. Wow. Wait a minute, yeah. Carla. Kat oh. just said Tasha's second line and all through the house. Oh, <laughs> He's oh. been second line and all week. All through the house. <laughs> with Listen his umbrella and a napkin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got that napkin with two fingers. Oh, my God. The- Carla, Listen play the second line good. music for her. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. But, listen but if you had a choice to be a fan, you would definitely want to be a, a New Orleans Saints fan. Oh, they they ain't fickle at all. They're oh, not yeah. fickle at they all. They don't they fans, real, they're real, baby. Oh, yeah. If For they sure. win, they you win. Remember. They lose, they lose. But it's going to be a party either way. <laughs> either way. Either way. <laughs> but let me tell y'all this. Y'all remember back in 2009 when the Saints won the Super Bowl? Uh-huh. Shirley, I don't know if you remember what? this. What? Shirley <laughs> called us because we had oh, a big yeah. old Super Bowl party. I did go Shirley yeah. called and said, what y'all doing? Y'all over there partying? <laughs> So I said, girl, why is Tosh talking about he going to run down the street butt naked in some boots? <laughs> <laughs> I do yeah, remember. Yeah. That's, oh, that's, when you, that's when you all the way in with your team, baby. <laughs> wait. Yeah. So, so Shirley said, Tasha was what, one, uh-huh. one or two? Tasha, so Shirley said, where's Tasha? I said, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know where the baby at. I was like, where you're baby? my baby. What are you we, doing we don't with my baby? A, the Saints won the Super Bowl. Did you hear me, right. Shirley? We don't care where the baby at. <laughs> So good times. Yeah, it's all fun. Yeah. All fun. Oh, man. Oh, well, that's man. the NFC. We got to talk about the AFC now, fellas. We got the New England Patriots. We well, already know how Kansas we're going over City here. Yeah. against the Chiefs. And mm-hmm. Barbecue. Think, yeah, I'm going with barbecue. You got to go with the Chiefs. Yes. And see, since I don't know much about football, here's how I pick a team. Okay. Whichever team got the most black players on that team, that's who I root for. Well, then it's, I, a, okay, it's well, a tie, Jay. Let me just say this. <laughs> let me say this. I'm not that's into it either, Jay. I take it a step uh-huh. further. Whoever's the cutest on the team. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, Shirley, so that means you're going Shirley. for New England? Whoever's and the then, cutest. And then I break okay. it down, Shirley. If they if they both got a lot of black players, who's got the most darkest players? I would go with that. <laughs> then, that mean, Jay, now you're going for the Chiefs. <laughs> you color strong. Because I'm going to tell you right now, Tariq Hill, dark enough. <laughs> he two people black. Ooh. Yeah, he take up for two people. 
That's what I like about Junior. Junior really knows sports. He really yes, knows. Yes, he, he does. I know football, yeah. man. I, I want to yeah. play. I want to well, be in the NFL. Yeah, he said that earlier. He wanted to be. That he was wanted my to whole play thing. in the NFL. Why that didn't was you? Your dream, right? Oh yeah, what happened? Torn ACL kills all of that. Oh yeah. You tore your ACL? Yeah. yeah. Playing yeah. football? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. What I position tried... you played, Junior? Running back. Running back. I knew yeah, that. Oh. Running back. Uh, I tried to really impress the coach and go after a pass on a play. Mm-hmm. I should have just let go. And so mm-hmm. I jumped, and the dude that was playing cornerback said, "You won't come down regular." Because <laughs> mm-hmm. uh-huh. he hit the mess out of me, man. Hit. Flipped me upside down. Wow. Hold on. When I landed, I knew right there. I said, yeah, this is over. Yeah, but, I wow. mean, plenty of people play with torn ACLs yeah, and but, stuff like but that. But I came well, back. Uh-huh. I came back. I didn't have speed no more. I just. Oh. I couldn't. Okay. I couldn't. You know what, All Junior? Right. I think I'd have whooped his ass every time I seen him out there. <laughs> every time. <laughs> man, that was I, it. In the <laughs> opportunity we passed by on the 300 hall by the lockers, I'm finna tear your ass <laughs> man. Oh, hold man, on behalf of me and a lot of people who don't know, what is an ACL? It's, uh, it's your Achilles it's, tendon. It's, it, no, it's, it's in your knee. Okay, now you're oh, going to give me the definition yeah. of something with something yeah. else I don't know. Oh, that's not <laughs> your Achilles. No, 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 it's, 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 it's in, in your knee. knee. Okay, yeah. Never mind. The ligament in your knee. <laughs> what you tell me? I know. Bro. I don't know. It's in the knee. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's your Achilles knee. tendon. Yeah, it's and she rubbed, and she rubbed hers. Rubbed, but the back of it, though. Yeah, the Achilles heel. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. She like she has doctors. Yeah, because it's ACL. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I got you. It's okay. Yeah. It's all good though. I was, I was, Achilles I is tried. down low, sure. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's by your you heel. Can't I do fix know it that. With duct tape or nothing like that. I mean, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 man. Some no, gorilla no. glue. You know. But, now let's talk see, about this. Really gorilla. Yeah, gorilla. If you're gonna watch the game, you got to have your wings together for the game. Oh yeah. Sunday. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now okay. Have your wings right. Here's a and, resident And you know what? What bothers me about some people when I go to their house. Your mm. wings ain't done, man. Cook your wings all the way through. Oh, yes. They're red and, not, and pink and on, on the don't, don't let them sit out, Tommy, and get all dry. Ugh. Yeah, that. Mm. I hate that. Are you cooking Sunday, Tommy? You making wings? I think I'm going to do some jerk chicken wings, man. You do jerk chicken wings? I do jerk. Yeah, I do can jerk. Cook. Yes. I, Tommy can cook, man. I know he can man. barbecue. I do jerk. I know he can barbecue. Jerk chicken I know, man, he introduced me to grilled oysters on the grill. I, Tommy did it. Like we said, his backyard. Oh, really? That was your first time? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. Tommy say, he said, eat this here. It's going to change your life. And it did. Because <laughs> every time I see it on New the Orleans, menu, I got to get it. <laughs> I can't cook at all. My son is a good cook, but I can't. But, That's Tommy, not. you're just having jerk chicken. You're not having, like, lemon pepper and hot. Yeah. You're not a variety. People like a variety. I mean, yeah, but but I do that because everybody likes variety. Everybody don't like jerk. Sometimes right. it's too, a little too spicy for you. So, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you got to do traditional. You got to do some, of course, lemon pepper. Lemon pepper just started. <laughs> about five years ago where that just became, you know, thing. on the menu. Yeah, the standard. And lemon pepper, love lemon, but it's not diabetic friendly. But I can tell you, every diabetic eat them. They eat them. They damn sure eat them. But it's not <laughs> sweet. It's not sweet, Jay. What do you mean it's not diabetic friendly? Because it's a lot of salt. That's salt. Oh, mm. okay. Oh, you okay. So sugar and salt is a problem. Mm-hmm. So you got mm-hmm. sugar and salt diabetes? Man. <laughs> Man. Wow. You can't have tart or sweet. <laughs> I'm not supposed to. So all your, so your your chicken. When you eat chicken, it really just be chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes all gamey. Wash, yeah. wash all that seasoning you, off and throw it on the grill. And, and it's chicken. baked. And it's baked, Junior. Yeah. <laughs> you just be having chicken. God, <laughs> your life sucks, man. Jay. My life I'd have sucks. been found a cure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That. Living your best life. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go Saints. Let's go Chiefs. We need y'all. Saints yeah. and Chiefs. What's up? That's what we're rolling with. That's what we're rolling with. I like it. All right. We'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Donald Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, paid someone $50,000 back in 2015 to rig online polls and tip them in Donald Trump's favor. Now, this is according to a Wall Street Journal article. Uh, John Gouger, the owner of tech company Red Finch Solutions, said that Cohen offered him the money to manipulate two news sites' polls to make sure it looked like Trump was leading. He claims that Cohen handed him a bag containing $12,000 during a meeting at Cohen's office and promised to pay him the remainder at a later date. But guess what? He never, never did. did. Never did. Mm. Yeah. That, that sounded like Trump. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the guy rigged the polls thinking he was going to get $50,000, only got twelve, and that was it. Uh, shortly after the Wall Street Journal uh, published the story, Cohen confirmed it on Twitter, writing, as for the WSJ, uh, as for at WSJ, uh, the article on poll rigging, what I did was at the direction of and for the sole benefit of at real Donald Trump at POTUS. I truly regret my blind loyalty to a man who doesn't deserve it. Mm. Wow, hindsight. When he said that at real Donald Trump, you know that's what? right at him, right? Yeah, that's his Twitter. Twitter. That's his Twitter yeah. account. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's right when Prince started cussing. Right yeah. <laughs> but see, all of them people wrong, though. He wrong for rigging it. They all supposed to be going to jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he never and got. He did he do it though? Did the guy yeah, he did yeah, he did it. He did it. He did it. He, did it. he definitely wow. did it. He didn't get paid though. I heard you, Jay. <laughs> what? What did Jay say? Rigger, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know Rigger who is us sick. on television? <laughs> what? Yeah, Jay, Tommy. Wait, what? Is... Wait, what? Okay, Tommy, you go first, then Jay. What? You know who is just as ignorant as we are, but they're on TV? <laughs> who? Man, Shaq, Barkley, and Kenny Smith. They are, they are ignorant, just as... And poor Ernie. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, TNT halftime show? Oh, my God. Show is when they make Kenny talk to that bull with oh. them knees. Man. When them knees hitting each other? Knock me, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, they've it all been on our show. Yeah. But back to Cohen, though. He's yeah, it, like it's like a canary. Yeah, ain't he? it seems like, yeah, he's telling it all. He appears to be, uh, he appears to just be determined to take Trump down. It's like he's not going down without a fight, and he's not going to, you know, take all this on without, you know, naming names. He's also trying to paint himself as a victim who was just doing what he was told. Part of that's true. Part of that's not true. Part of he, part of it was he knew he was the fixer. I'm with you. He's and he not a, a victim at all. He yeah. was getting paid to to be dirty. Yeah, right. he was a fixer. He, just, he was the president. You knew what you was doing was illegal. You knew what you knew doing. Right. But he didn't. He didn't know that he was going to get turned in and turned on. He didn't like know this. he was going to get left no. behind the scenes. He that's what he didn't yeah. know. Yeah. He, he didn't he, know he was going to have a number on his shirt. He yeah. didn't know that. He didn't know that part, right. He was sentenced last month to three years in federal prison. He didn't prison. know he going to hear, lights out, Cohen! <laughs> <laughs> uh, for three years in federal prison for tax evasion, campaign finance violations, and lying to Congress. Before he goes to jail, though, Cohen will testify before the House Oversight Committee, and I'm sure he's going to spill some more stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. During that test, Cohen came to Shawshank in 2008. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Morgan Freeman. Oh, God. Okay, uh, we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning right, Show. Right, Cohen. I'm not gonna tell you again. <laughs> right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Gladys Knight will sing the national anthem before Super Bowl 53. Now, at least they got somebody who can really, sing. really sing. She can okay. sing. Yes, right. yes, mm-hmm. yes. The Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, that is Gladys Knight, and seven-time Grammy Award winner will add a hometown connection when the big game is played February 3rd at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. Uh, Gladys says she's proud to use her voice to unite and represent our country in her hometown of Atlanta. The NFL mm-hmm. recently announced their new social justice platform, Inspire Change, and she says she is both honored to be a part of its inaugural year. She's the latest in a parade of pop legends who've sung the anthem at previous Super Bowls. That includes Cher, Aretha Franklin, Diana Ross, and Whitney Houston. Wow. Mm. Uh, did I say Diana Ross? Not Diana Ross. She did halftime. Uh, so, Carla, you have some more entertainment news from uh, the reality TV world. What's going on with Greg, Lu- uh, uh, Greg Leakes? Well, you know what? We know that Greg Leakes, uh, Shirley, Tommy Jr., and Jay, he's in the mm-hmm. fight for his life, you know? Right. Yeah. We right. Know, yeah. Right. yeah. And we know that Nene, his wife, has been right there by his side oh, as yeah. he battles stage three of colon cancer. Mm-hmm. But there was something that happened between them. We don't really know what went down between the two of them, but it was bad enough that... I guess that Greg felt like he had to go to social media to apologize to Nene. He posted this beautiful picture of his wife with the caption, we always hurt the ones we love because they allow us to hurt them rather than snap back. Mm -hmm. So he went on to say that he's tired of hurting her because she deserves more. 
for her hard efforts and tireless hours spent on me. And then Greg finished up the caption saying, I pray to God to get it together. She's done no wrong. This is all on me. Cancer will change your life. And so he has asked for forgiveness from his wife. Hashtag never been here before and hashtag I'm scared too. So, that's gotta yeah, be painful, that's, that, that takes man, we got to pray for Greg. That, yeah, he's a weird prayer of healing for right. Greg. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cancer is an emotional disease. Yes. Uh, it's it's mm. tough. It's tough. But we're praying for the and that's, Leaks family. Yeah, and that's yeah. big of him. Uh, uh, yes. Everything he's going through, he comes back and uh, realizes that Sorry. he's hurt his wife in some sort of way. And uh, a bi- it takes a big man great. to do that. It yeah. Does. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, big and apologize yeah. publicly. Yeah, you know? publicly. Yeah. Wow, because mm-hmm. I didn't know what was going on. Mm-mm, I yeah. heard about it and I said, "What is this about?" So I got some information about Sometimes it. So again, sick people can be very mean, and you have to forget. Yes, yeah, that yes. Sick, yes. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, and it's just a way to snap out, and if they snap out at the person that's there. You know, yes, trying to help them. Mm-hmm. You know? That is so true, it's, Jay. I mean, you know, it's it's the medication, the, the pain, and. All of that, emotions that they're going through. So you're right. You're right. But we're going to pray for the Leaks family. Absolutely. You got this, Greg. Prayers of healings going up. Mm-hmm. Hang in there, Greg. All right, mm-hmm. we're going to switch gears now in national news, guys. President Trump has fired back at House Speaker Nancy Pelosi a day after she asked him to postpone the State of the Union speech, citing the strain on security personnel during the government shutdown. Uh, Trump has canceled a trip abroad that uh, Pelosi was scheduled to take on a military plane. In a letter to Pelosi, Trump says, due to the shutdown, I am sorry to inform you that your trip to Brussels, Egypt and Afghanistan uh, has been postponed. We will reschedule this seven day excursion when the shutdown is over. He's petty. Uh, yeah, He's tit petty, for tat. Come on, petty. Pet- petty. Yeah, that's petty. very yeah. petty. All right. Uh, coming up. Uh, <laughs> Our last break of the day, we're going to close out the show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we are, last break of the day on this Friday. Steve, uh, what do you have for us, closing remarks-wise, today? Yeah, uh, here's something that I think is very helpful to people, and it would help you uh, open yourself up to really what God truly can have for you. And the reason I'm saying that is because oftentimes, we limit what God can do in our lives simply by the way we we think mm-hmm. and simply by our expectations. God has no, he's limitless. You, you can't put him in a box. You can't put what God can do for you in the parameters of your thinking. What you've got to do is you've got to open up your mind so you can be open to all of his goodness and what he can do for you. And I'm saying that to say this because a lot of times people ask God and only think about stuff that they can see themselves attaining, Mm -hmm. basically with your check. There's a scripture that says you have not because you ask not. Well, then most people go, Lord, help me make my rent. Mm -hmm. And then I have to ask you, well, don't he always? Why would you not ask God for a mortgage? Well, own, become a homeowner. Then here comes the thinking of man. You start putting in stuff like, well, I don't make enough money. My credit score. I haven't been on my job long enough. I can't afford that. Therefore, why would I sit up and ask for that? See, you, you, you're knocking yourself out of so many blessings that God can have for you by your limited thinking because God has no limits. So you have to open up your mind. So you have to start thinking of things that is in your imagination. Why would you not ask God for a big house? You don't think that God got enough sense based on this scripture. You have not cause you ask not. Most people don't ask because they don't see no way they can get it. You don't think that if you ask God for a big house, you don't think he got enough sense to make a way for you to get the house? Hmm. You don't think that he knows that you need more money and that he know how to make a way for you to make more money? You don't think he got that part figured out? You think he needs your help figuring that out? You don't think that he know that if you got X amount of dollars, your credit score really don't matter? You don't think he know that? He know all of that. 
but you've limited to see what he can do and how he can move in your life because you won't think big enough. There is a book that changed my life. The name of the book is called The Magic of Thinking Big, and it's by David Schwartz. It's The Magic of Thinking Big. And I didn't understand this until I was selling Amway. Amway was one of the greatest periods of my life because it introduced me to uh, positive books. It introduced me to self-motivation and self-help books. And those are really the only books I read. Outside of the Bible, I don't read anything. I don't read novels, love stories. I ain't got no time for that. But The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. I have time to read that. Because The Magic of Thinking Big taught me something. It taught me that it does not require any more brain power to think big than it does to think small. It doesn't require any more. You ain't got to grunt. You know, look, you can say Volkswagen or you can say Rolls Royce. It doesn't, your brain don't have to shift and burn more sales and you got to throw yourself into something to say Rolls Royce versus Volkswagen. It doesn't hurt more to say rent or mortgage. It doesn't hurt no more to say new car than used car. It doesn't hurt more to say hand me down than it costs than it costs you to say brand new if you buy this book the magic of thinking big by david schwartz it's an amazing way it changed my thinking in my 20s and so i started thinking big once i started thinking big i started opening up to the possibilities of god because god is big am i not right god is big so why would you get in the way of his bigness with your small mindedness See, you're getting in the way of your blessings by the way you think. You keep thinking in terms of your paycheck. Get God ain't in your paycheck. Get out of your paycheck, man. Get out of your current situations. Where you are is just temporary. God has another place for you. God got a great life for you. But you got to invite him in and let him show it to you. Quit wasting his time with this little bitty man. Get out of your own way. You are in your way with your limited thinking. People ask me all the time, man, why are you always at the meetings? Why, are you why don't you just sit down and take your day off? Because I can't get where I'm going sitting down taking my days off. I'm about the business of becoming successful and happy. Now, am I successful? Yeah. Am I happy? Yeah. Happier than I ever been. But, and I have everything I need. Can I tell y'all that? I don't need nothing else. But I'm in the want side of life. Mm -hmm. I just want. I'm not greedy. I'm not asking you to give me nothing. I'm willing to work for other things I want. I want to see how the other class of people live. I want to see what that's like. I want to see wh what it's like when my grandchildren's children will remember my name because I left them something. Because I created a legacy that I put money away from my grandchildren and my children's children. That's what I'm working on. You can do that. God is capable. Get out your way. This is the book again, y'all. The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. Go buy it. Go buy it. Just go buy it. I'm getting it. It changed the way you think. Just check it out. It's a really, really great book. Those are my closing remarks. Y'all have a great weekend. <clears throat> I'm going to get audio because I don't read that well, so I have somebody to read. Good. <laughs> That's good. Nor, nor can you see. <laughs> <laughs> y'all have a great weekend. Y'all blame <laughs> For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 